The melody or lead part of a piece of music consists of two main types of movement. Horizontal, which can be thought of as a predominantly linear sequence of tones, typically a half or whole step apart, and derived from a scale. And vertical, which can be thought of as arpeggiating or outlining the backing chord, with a greater distance between each tone. It's the combination of these two musical directions that can help us form dynamic, meaningful melodic phrases. In this lesson, we focus specifically on the vertical element in a minor context. All minor chords and scales consist primarily of the minor triad, root, minor third, and fifth, here displayed in A minor. This is our basic minor sound, whether in chord or arpeggio form. Get to know this core arpeggio in different positions and on different roots, ascending and descending. Once you have these positions memorized, try leading the arpeggio into a regular scale phrase, starting on any of its tones. For example, here the arpeggio precedes a Dorian lick. This time I use an arpeggio to lead out of a phrase. Lead-ins and lead-outs are a simple but effective way of using arpeggios and putting your scale phrases into context. Let's now add the minor or flat seventh to our minor triad, positioned a whole step or two frets down from the root, giving us a minor seventh arpeggio. This will work over most occurrences of a minor chord. As you can see from those examples, we can skip tones and strings in the sequence to enhance the vertical effect. Practice sequencing your arpeggios in different ways. Now, what's interesting about the minor seventh arpeggio is that it contains two overlapping relative triads, in this case A minor and C major. So the relative major arpeggio is rooted on the minor third of the chord we're playing over. A minor gives us the 1, flat 3 and 5. C major gives us the flat 3, 5, and flat 7. Listen to how the C major arpeggio effectively gets reharmonized over A minor. So we have a choice between playing through the full minor 7th sequence or breaking it up into its relative minor and major triads. Take this example, where we start with an A minor 7th arpeggio, followed by C major, moving to a higher C major, and finally A minor 7, bending the 7th up a whole step to the root. No matter how you break it down, the combination of these four tones gives us the minor 7th sound compatible with most minor chords. We're now going to extend this arpeggio further by adding the ninth, or the second in scale terms, a natural colour tone over minor chords. It can be seen as positioned two frets up from the root, or one fret down from the minor third. This gives us a minor ninth roadmap. It's now starting to look like a scale, and technically it can be played in the manner of a pentatonic scale, since we now have five tones. but we can give it a more vertical expression simply by sequencing it differently. For example, we could play the arpeggio in strict sequence from 1 to 9, outlining a minor ninth chord.
Like before, we can also create skips in the sequence as follows. Another way to see it is as a major seventh arpeggio on the relative major root, or the flat three of the minor chord we're playing over. In this case, that would give us C major seven. This relative major seventh arpeggio becomes a minor ninth over our minor chord, with the root omitted. So we're effectively reharmonizing the major seventh pattern in a minor context. Again, we can see a related triad within this minor ninth pattern, this time built on the fifth of the minor chord we're playing over. So in relation to A minor, that's E minor in this case. The E minor arpeggio gives us the five, flat seven and nine of our A minor chord. Here I'm injecting an E minor arpeggio into an A minor scale phrase. These related triads are just another way of compartmentalizing our vertical approach to lead playing. Finally, let's add the 11th to our minor roadmap. The 11th is the equivalent of the 4th in scale terms and a natural color tone of minor chords. It can be seen as a whole step up from the flat 3 or down from the 5. Our combined tones 1, flat 3, 5, flat 7, 9 and 11 make up a minor 11th arpeggio. Again, we could play the sequence of tones as a scale. You might see this minor 11th sequence as minor pentatonic with an added 2 or 9. But as we're focusing on arpeggios, we can sequence the tones as a more vertical expression of the chord. Here I'm resolving the arpeggio to a nearby minor third. And here I resolve to the root. You could also see an E minor 7 arpeggio within our roadmap. Here we build a minor 7th arpeggio on the 5th of the minor chord we're playing over. Like before, there's another related triad hiding within this minor 11th roadmap, G major in this case. This major arpeggio can be seen as built on the 7th, positioned two frets or a whole step down from the root of the minor chord we're playing over. For example, a G major arpeggio covers the flat 7, 9 and 11 of A minor. Another vertical compartmentalization of our minor colors. Here I resolve to the root and here to the minor third. So within this minor 11th roadmap, we have several arpeggio options rooted on different intervals of the chord that serve to give our minor melody a more vertical expression and color. For triads, the minor triad on the root, a major triad on the flat three, a minor triad on the five, and a major triad on the flat seven. For seventh arpeggios, a minor 7 on the root, a major 7 on the flat 3, and a minor 7 on the 5. Whether you see the minor 11th roadmap as made up of related triads, 7th arpeggios, or even just sections of the full minor 11th arpeggio, we can incorporate any of these sequences freely into our scale phrases. This table summarizes which arpeggios you can build on each interval relative to the backing chord. Let's now try applying these arpeggios to a simple chord sequence. Here I'm changing between A minor and D minor, or the 1 and 4 chords in a natural minor key. So we're first going to get comfortable with our A minor and D minor arpeggios based around their respective roadmaps. These arpeggios will form the basis of our melody. Let's start really simple with the bass triads for each chord, starting with A minor.
Let's now hear this sequence with the full backing track, which you can download on the lesson page. Not only do these arpeggios work over most instances of a minor chord, they also work well over other chords in both relative minor and major keys. The same minor 11th tones get reharmonized to the related chord we play over. For example, over the 3 chord, C major in this case, and the relative major tonic of A minor, all of our A minor related arpeggios from earlier would be compatible. The full minor 11th arpeggio gives us a major 13th flavour over the relative major. Over the 4 chord, or D minor in this key, the tonic minor 11th arpeggio gives us a minor 13th flavour. And the 6 chord, or F major in this key, the tonic minor 11th arpeggio gives us a major 13th augmented 11th flavour. We'll look more specifically at colouring major and also dominant 7th chords with their own arpeggios in another part. In summary, we can approach most minor chords vertically using a minor 11th roadmap, breaking it up into several related triads and 7ths. But the general concept here is that by combining these vertical movements with more linear scale movements, you'll find it much easier to write, improvise, and train your ear to musical phrases. For more help with this concept, including backing tracks and tabs, visit the lesson page linked in the description. Please also don't forget to like and share this video if it's helped. Cheers. Yeah.